And now at this time, it is my great honor and privilege to invite to the stage Edith's son, Arturo Scott Bagley. Thank you. Nancy Crow, interim, oh, I'm sorry, Nancy Crow, president of the Indiana College Alumni Board. Uh, we will jointly present this award to Ultra. just a couple of lines from the award for the benefit of the audience. And it states that, whereas Edith Scott Bagley came to Antioch College in 1943 from the deep south of Marion, Alabama, becoming one of Antioch's first African-American students, whereas her Antioch experience was so enriching that it broadened her horizons and strengthened her values, whereas she returned to the south to teach high school and English later earning her master's degree in English from Columbia University, where she later earned a master's in fine arts and a degree in theater from Boston University, whereas she was a key facilitator of the, in the civil rights movement that began to transform the South, whereas, whereas she assisted her sister, Coretta Scott King, after her sister's husband, Martin Luther King Jr., was assassinated, Whereas through legislation that gave blacks more economic and political power, especially education and the arts, she served as a consultant in developing the major black trauma for Michigan State University. Whereas Walter Anderson recognizes contributions by alumni and friends of Antioch College, who have served as a mentor, teacher, and inspiration for countless students. Whereas the members of the Antioch College alumni board and also uh, the Asia College of Color Group recommend Edith Scott Bagley to receive the Walter Hanks Award. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Alumni Board of Asia College authorizes bestowing the Walter Hanks Award upon Edith Scott Bagley. so much. I wish that uh, my mother uh, were able to, to travel and be her be here herself, but I feel honored to, uh, to have come here and to accept this award on her behalf. And I, uh, I feel like an Antiochian because I've been, I've been raised on Antioch lore from the time that uh, my mother gave me my formula. So I, I feel like one of you, and I'm, I'm really happy. I'm really happy to be here. And I have some uh, remarks, um, the first part of which uh, my mother actually wrote herself, and the second part of which um, I wrote, but which I think are, uh, are, are appropriate at this time, and which she uh, approved the sentiments of. So um, I'll just read them, and you'll see kind of where the line is. Fellow Antiochians and friends, if I had it to do all over again, I would choose Antioch College for my undergraduate education. I say this because I deeply feel that Antioch gave me the foundation I needed to succeed in the life I was destined to live. Now at age 85, I feel fulfilled. What a distinct honor it is to have been chosen to be one of the first recipients of the Walter F. Anderson Award. Walter Anderson was a creative genius who never lost the common touch. I feel proud and humbled at receiving an award which carries his name. I myself have been called a pioneer. So was Walter Anderson. Pioneering carries its hazards as well as its rewards. This segment of today's program is one, uh, is one, uh, that rewards uh, Walter and as well as the three recipients 
of this award. I wish to thank the committee and others who were involved in making the decision to create this moment for all of us. As Antioch College moves forward in its second phase, may it continue its rich legacy of creative leadership and education, training young men and women who will win victories for humanity worldwide. My mother is honored to receive this award also because it is from this place that she loves. Although she did not receive her degree here, she has never considered herself anything but an Antiochian. Ever since she first arrived on this campus in 1943. For her, this is a special place, in part because of the people she knew here who nurtured and inspired her, people like Dr. Anderson. But her love for Antioch goes beyond that, to the core values for which it stands. Antioch pushed the boundaries of higher education with the cooperative plan. The idea that students learn as much outside the classroom as in. That the best education is a natural, holistic experience, not a narrow, artificial one. For years, she's told me the story of how she spent an afternoon on one of her co-op jobs speaking with novelist Richard Wright. Richard Wright. That's the kind of experience, life experience, that you can't purchase at any price. College is supposed to be a time in which we experiment and stretch ourselves intellectually and spiritually. Education at its best should expose us to ideas we have not considered and should help us mature and become better and more nuanced people. Antioch has been special in this area from the very beginning because of the vision of its founding president, Horace Mann, the father of American public education. Before Horace Mann, education in this country was the province of the lucky few. This was an agrarian country, and children were valuable hands who were needed in the field. Mann himself was mostly self-educated, only attending school a few weeks a year until he was admitted to Brown. When you recognize the power of education, the power universal education can have to unshackle humanity from the bonds of race, class, and gender. He believed in human perfectibility and saw education for all as the key to achieving that condition. As part of that vision, he hired his niece, Rebecca Pinnell, for the faculty, and she was paid the same salary as her male colleagues. So from its founding, Antioch was committed to values of equality and fairness that are at the heart of what's best about humanity and are at the core of this nation's promise to its people. And the nation and the world need places like Antioch College to remind them of what they can be. The last time I was here was in 1982 when my Aunt Coretta gave a commencement address. One of my lasting memories of that visit was my mother's and my aunt's insistence that I see the man monument with its inscription, be afraid to die until you have won some victory for humanity. Looking back on that day, I now understand that part of their commitment to making the world a better, fairer place was instilled in them right here. This place opened up a new world of possibilities for a teenage black girl from rural Alabama and affirmed that she had a place in this world. Has Antioch been a perfect place? Of course not. No such place exists. But it aspires to the best that humans can attain and its accomplishments to that end are real. So my mother is honored to receive this award because of her love of this place and all that it has meant. Finally, she is happy to receive it at this time in its history, when its sons and daughters have come together to raise this phoenix from the ashes and make it stronger and better than ever. A statue of Horace Mann stands on the grounds of the Massachusetts State House. Nearby stands one of statesman and orator Daniel Webster. In the case of Dar Dartmouth College B. Woodward, Webster remarked, you may destroy this little institution, 
It is weak. It is in your hands. It is a small school, but there are those of us who love it. The love this group has shown for this institution is something that has excited and energized my mother. And it is a love she shares. She accepts this award in solidarity with what you are doing today and with confidence uh, in what Antioch College will continue to mean for future generations. Thank you.